What's up you guys, my name is Monsol. I'm with Neutropedia. Today we're gonna talk about nootropics for energy. Now the first step is I've gotta make it clear that there are two common definitions of nootropics for energy. Now energy is often meant to mean ATP or energy in your cells and it's often misunderstood to mean energy as in focus, concentration, or mental stimulation. So you have these two definitions. Energy is ATP, cellular ATP, and then energy is focus and concentration. Now I'm going to talk about both of these so that I can cover both bases no matter what you are trying to achieve. So guys, if you're increasing your energy, from a cellular level, that means increasing ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is what's known as energy, and that is produced by small regions of the cell called mitochondria. Yeah, I know, this is gonna be a boring science lesson if I keep going down this path, so let's just put that aside for now. The truth is, we wanna create more ATP, and we do that by improving the health of our mitochondria. The number one nootropic that I use for that on a daily basis, every single day, is creatine monohydrate. Now, I know that there's a ton of different stereotypes that come with using a bodybuilder supplement like creatine, but there's a reason why they use it. Creatine improves the energy, the ATP in their muscle cells, which allows them to do more, lift more weights, heavier weights, and get stronger. The same is true for your brain. So you're gonna be able to improve things like uh, memory formation, learning ability, you're gonna retain cognitive performance, performance over the long term, and it's a great supplement for that reason alone. There's plenty of uh, horror stories and side effects, you know, fears for women especially who don't think that they should use creatine, they'll get big and bloated. It's just simply not true. Of course, test it out for yourself. Make sure you aren't doing something that's not comfortable, uh, or make sure you're not doing something that's uncomfortable for you. But it's usually overblown when it comes to side effects of creatine. Now number two is a stack of CoQ10, coenzyme 10, plus PQQ. Now both of these individually help improve mitochondrial function. They help to improve energy levels and ATP in the mitochondria, but together they work even better. There's a study that shows PQQ plus CoQ10 combined was more effective than either of them alone. That suggests that there's some kind of synergy between these two compounds that improves cellular ATP. So guys, number three is nicotinamide riboside. Now this is a uh, kind of a newer compound. It's not super well studied compared to the first two that I mentioned, but it has a lot of studies in favor of its usage for improving mitochondrial health, improving energy at the cellular level, and there are plenty of downstream effects as well, like uh, reduced oxidative stress, anti-inflammation, and all of the side effects that come from increasing the energy in each of your cells. So guys, now that we have talked about how to use nootropics for energy, and specifically the definition of energy as ATP in our cells, let's talk about the other definition of energy in the nootropics world, and that's mental stimulation. Now I'm going to talk about three different nootropic options, but I want to avoid caffeine altogether. I'm going to assume that you're either already using caffeine, or you're trying to find alternatives alternatives to a cup of coffee so that you're not addicted to caffeine on a consistent basis. Now number one is phenylparastam. Now this is a really big favorite of mine. It's a cholinergic compound, completely different than caffeine, and it is useful for improving not only focus and concentration and mental energy, but also physical stimulation. I love using phenylparastam before going to the gym. I also find that phenylparastam is helpful for aspects like creativity and dropping into a flow state. Now, I specifically learned these things by doing a QEEG brain mapping at the Peak Brain Institute in Los Angeles, but even if you don't have that experience of increased flow and creativity, at the very least, the phenylparastam is gonna improve your uh, mental stimulation, physical stimulation, and focus and concentration. Now, number two is modafinil or armodafinil. 
Now, I'm not a big proponent of using this, especially not on a daily basis, but if you are gonna use it, a once a week cycle could really help you. And again, it is different from caffeine. So it's actually technically a wakefulness agent, but it will improve your mental stimulation, your physical capabilities, and it is a popular drug used in Silicon Valley and many other regions where high performers are uh, using nootropics and smart drugs. Again, this isn't my first choice. It's not a go-to nootropic, but it is a potential option for you if you're looking for mental stimulation. Number three is N-acetyl-L-tyrosine, or NALT. And NALT is a essentially a similar compound to L-tyrosine, which is an amino acid, but it's slightly more bioavailable, slightly more effective at increasing dopaminergic activity and increasing concentration and physical stimulation. Now, this is a much safer bet than even mecunoprurians, which bypasses uh, an enzyme that is is potentially dangerous to do over the long term. So that's why I recommend L-tyrosine if you are just trying to get into the basics, but N-acetyl L-tyrosine if you want the uh, the full you know benefit of using this amino acid. So guys, that's it. There is a, a brief overview of some different nootropics, whether you think of nootropics for energy uh, on the side of creating ATP and cellular energy to just you know have a more improved functioning of your of your body in general or if you mean nootropics for energy for mental stimulation and physical stimulation I've given you answers for both so please subscribe to the channel check out my other videos I'll see you next time